This is one of the most revolting creatures I've ever seen. But we need to try it. Okay, ready? Ready. One, two, three. Ah! Our Highland food mission continues in Vietnam's isolated Northwest. Last time, getting a taste of the traditional left us with arachnophobia. Are we gonna eat the fangs? Yes. Today, we're at it again. You excited? Learning how. Oh, yeah. And why. What? You eat that? The most extreme white Thai recipes have survived for generations. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, Mr. Sunny. Today, our focus is on Vietnam's national animal. Mm. Any guesses as to what that is? The mosquito. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good guess. It is not that. Some animal that you've seen all around dotting the Northwest. The water buffalo? The water buffalo. Water buffalo are of incredible cultural, economic, and historical importance to Vietnamese people. Domesticated more than 5,000 years ago, they serve largely as a powerhouse source of labor. So you don't often see it being eaten, but sometimes it is eaten. And actually, now in modern days, it's becoming more and more common to eat this. Today, we're gonna find out why. Soon, we'll be trying some intense, extreme Thai food. But first, we're visiting the birthplace of traditional Thai cooking, a Thai home kitchen. In this white Thai village, many families slaughter and smoke an entire buffalo once a year. I'm here to learn why. The Thai are the second largest ethnic group in Vietnam, 1.5 million strong. Among them, the black Thai, who we met last time, and the white Thai, who we're meeting today. We have just entered the house of a white Thai family, and right now, I'm in the kitchen. Now, there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye at first glance. Let me show you. First of all, in the center of the kitchen, they have a fire, which doesn't seem like a big deal, except for the whole house is made out of wood. Typically, white Thai houses are made of wood collected from nearby forests. They sit on huge wooden stilts, around seven feet high. Potentially, these fires could be going all day. That's perfect because that's exactly what you need to smoke meat. If you look up here, uh, it's like a beef closet. What do you have hanging in your closet? I bet it's not beef. But it's not just beef that they're smoking. Here, this is the front guard of a fan. <laughs> You'll see these used all over Vietnam, not actually on fans, because if you take it off the fan, it makes a great basket. Yes, your five-year-old is probably gonna stick their hand in a fan and lose a finger, but still, you have a cool basket. So in this fan guard basket, we have a smoked chicken. It's looking kind of hard and dried out. So in a second, we're gonna actually try this smoked chicken and this smoked beef. You excited? Look at that excitement. First of all, what is your name? Vang Thi Hai. You can call her Hai. Dining with us today, the house owner, Miss Hai. Hello, Hai. How old are you? Cô sinh năm 60. 61 years old. 61. Wow. Yes. What is your secret to long-term youth and vitality? Cái gì đâu? <laughs> she don't know. Just live here with the nature, so she always feel relaxed and happy with the life. <laughs> I'm so interested and fascinated by mm. the buffalo people are eating in this area. By this time, we've traveled all over the Northwest, and it seems almost every home has a buffalo, but the buffaloes are being utilized in some way, and so I don't see almost anybody eating the buffalo. But here, among the white Thai people, this seems to be a tradition. How old were you when you first saw a buffalo being slaughtered and preserved in this way? Ever since he was about 12, he learned how to make this kind of meat. Before refrigeration was invented, smoking meat helped Thai people survive and thrive. Smoking allowed them to preserve protein year-round while killing any harmful bacteria, thus preventing food poisoning. Should we try this out? Let's go for it, man. I'm excited. Months ago, this buffalo meat was smoked and dried. Now, she's going to bring it back to life. First, she heats it up over fiery coals, then tenderizes it by smashing it with a stone. As it softens up, she's able to shred it into thin strips. On the side, an intensely flavored traditional Thai dip. Cheers. Cheers. Oh my god. Dude, that's got way more of like a South African biltong flavor to it. Like a little bit of that gaminess. Mm -hmm. I like the sauce. It's a little bit fresh and mm -hmm. a little bit peppery. Just gives some zest to it. And this is, this is great. Since she's heated it up, mm. it's like releasing all the oils yes. from the buffalo. Super good. 
Do you own a refrigerator? We used to have a one fridge, but now it's just broken, so it cannot use it anymore. So she used to have one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she was like, we don't need that. Yeah, she has no use for it. If they have uh, some fresh meat and they don't want to use it now, they will hang it to make it uh, smoke. Well, that's what they've done here with this chicken. To prepare the smoked chicken, she cuts it into bite-sized pieces and stir-fries it with ginger and a bit of water to rehydrate it. But chickens are so small. It's easy to kill a chicken and a family can just eat the whole thing. So why smoke a chicken? I'm not good, you know. Because they love the smell of the smoked chicken. Let's try it out. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Mmm, that's really good. Mm -hmm. It has a really satisfying, deep smokiness. Mm -hmm. It sort of tastes a bit more like a duck or a goose. Mm -hmm. Not really like a chicken. Right. This is fantastic. I love seeing where the tradition comes from and then how it's kind of transformed over the years and become much more popular meat. And it all started with this tradition that kind of came out of necessity for the white Thai people. Very cool. Due to Vietnam's rapid development, this way of life and these customs may not go on forever. But one woman is doing her part to not only conserve her culture, but to share its most unique foods with outsiders. Andrew, Sunny. I came here under this house, one, because it's raining, but two, to introduce you to our next guest. Thank you for joining us today, ma'am. Fill a handshake. Meet Miss Chow, a local white Thai. She started a restaurant in her home four years ago. Here, she serves tasty classics, but also the most daring Thai delicacies you'll ever try. They um, look gnarly, man. They look gnarly. It's one of the most creepy bugs I've ever seen. So these are a kind of water centipede. I'm so curious about this. I'm guessing you didn't just make up this recipe recently. When is the first time you tried this? Uh, this Thai food is a part of her childhood. Ever since she was a little girl, she started to catch this one and bring back home and cook it. These centipedes are native to this area. They're carnivorous creatures, preying on worms and other insects. Folks here pluck them straight from the river, bring them home, and invite them to dinner. Andrew, I think we should both grab one right now. Bro, how do you stop it from biting us? You go quickly behind its head and you grab it so it can't turn around to bite you. Should I go first? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go first. I see one here. Woohoo! <sighs> Oh, it's trying. Oh, man. It's trying. Oh, dude! It's trying its best to twist around no, no, and bite no. me. Your turn, Andrew. Yeah. Oh, I died. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, I got it. You proud of that? <laughs> oh, mine one's more widely. Yours is like half dead. <laughs> what? Yeah. Mine's ready to take down a horse. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Andrew. We need to try it. Dude, this is one of the most revolting creatures I've ever seen. But so is a coconut worm, and we've had coconut worms raw before. This is part of the trip. You have a small one, I have a giant one. It's right. fine. Okay. So I think we just go for it. Okay. You ready? All right, ready. Here we go. Right. One, two, three. Ah! No, 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 no! What? Guys, right, she said that we need to cook it. Oh, you don't eat it like this? No. Oh. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm just gonna put that back. All right. Jesus, that's a relief. Whew. Um, so Andrew, I can see you're a little traumatized by this. There's a couple things we're eating today. Yeah. So I will handle this, mm -hmm. and you can handle the poisonous plants. Sound good? The what? There's a plant, it's poisonous. Oh. You're gonna help with that. All right, plants. I can do plants. All right. <laughs> see ya. All right, while Andrew is preparing plants, I'm preparing the freaking, what is it, centipede, millipede, caterpillar, the nightmare centipede, demonic millipede. It's one of those, what's the actual name? Uh, water centipede. Oh, it's a water centipede. It's a cute, quaint name, considering it looks like something that crawled up through hell and ended up here on Earth. Yeah, what? Okay guys, so. Given that I have been tasked with dealing with the supposedly poisonous plant, I've been doing some Googling, and what we have here is a plant known as Dilithium or Yellow Jasmine. Yellow Jasmine is native to China and Southeast Asia. All parts of this plant are poisonous due to a high concentration of alkaloids. Here in Vietnam, however, there are two varieties. Luckily for us, what I've been told is that the other variety, hopefully the one we're about to eat, is less poisonous and thus edible. So that's good to know. The way she works with these, She's so slick, she's so smooth, going from one to the next, not getting bit, it's very impressive. If they weren't scary enough, the centipede's two front legs contain venom. For insects, this means certain death. But for humans, this venom could cause extreme, mild irritation. Is it gonna kill you? Probably not. No, the vegetables are what's gonna kill us today. But 
It'll hurt, it'll be inconvenient, and nobody wants that. Oh, did you want help? Okay, she's like, can you do something besides talk? Oh, Jesus, they're still very much alive. So do that. We're literally rubbing their bellies. Hmm, what's that mean? One interesting story I was told in preparation for this is that when there is a young local couple around here that is deeply in love, and their parents ban them from getting married, they will sometimes use this leaf to commit suicide. Being poisoned by yellow jasmine is not a pleasant experience. Its effects can be felt soon after ingestion, leading to a painful death by asphyxiation. Yeah, it's very tragic in a very Romeo and Juliet fashion. All right, so that looks fantastic. They're still alive and they're happier than ever because now they're ready for the big feast. With a midi note. Mmm. All right, we are in the kitchen, and this is the most exciting part of the centipede preparing process. She's gonna take big, goopy chopstick fulls and shallow fry them in the hot oil. This is probably the best way to prepare an insect, is just to really fry it, get it crunchy, and hopefully it's gonna taste like french fries. Hopefully she has mayonnaise. I'm gone, mayonnaise. I do not think she has mayonnaise. <laughs> Ma'am, what an honor. I know many have come here before me, but does everyone get to sit down here with you? I think not. Let's take a look at the spread here. So we've got buffalo, chicken, mm. tri-color sticky rice. Over here, I was really curious about this. Mm. So this is the plant Andrew was kind of helping with. Right. He yeah. told me a little bit about it. It's a potentially poisonous plant. It looks harmless now. It just looks like a bunch of fried up spinach with garlic. Is this from the garden or from the wild? In the past, it's just a wild plant, but then the people find out that they can eat this. So they bring it to the garden and plant this and it become a vegetable for the daily life of the people here. How many people did it take to find that out? <laughs> a lot of people die of mistaking this vegetable with the other one. They do? Yes. Because in Vietnamese, they all call it Lang On. Both? Yes, the same name. Yeah, that but doesn't seem like a good idea. I will call yeah. one of them poison kill plant mm. and the other one Lang broccoli. <laughs> Stir-fried heartbreak grass. After the leaves are cut, they get stir-fried with salt and MSG. Add an egg and mix until it's cooked. And definitely not full of poison. All right, let's try it out. <laughs> That's bitter. A little bit. Now the leaf is very firm. Even after cooking, it's a thick leaf, almost like a lime leaf in thickness. Oh, and it has a powerful aftertaste. Yeah, a little bitter. Obviously she's kind of dressed it up with some salt, some mm. garlic, so the tastes are great. Do you know anybody who's actually died or been poisoned? One in the village and the surrounding areas died because of eating the other side of the poisonous leaf because they have some tip to recognize them. Oh. Yeah. All right, let's talk about this. So I gotta say, it has reduced in size from the mm. frying. Mm -hmm. It does look crunchy, which is nice. And last of all, it's not moving anymore. It's just very docile and calm at this moment. It's almost in a meditative state. Oh wait, no, it's just dead. <laughs> right. Should we try it? Let's go. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. It's like a French fry. Dude, that's surprising. Oh. Pretty no? Wait till you get to the end. It is like an old pate. Yeah, it kicks in right at the end. Yeah, in the beginning you're like, maybe it's yeah. like a french fry. Oh, it's not <laughs> like a french fry at all. Right, at the beginning it's like really good. And then there's this really strange aftertaste. So surprising. Usually when you fry bugs like grasshoppers or crickets, there's really no flavor left. These, it's not the case. Lots of flavor. Beyond that, the legs are kind of over fried, so they crunch like you're chewing on soot. I can't believe how strong the flavor is. I mean, all of the bugs we've had have kind of been nondescript, but mm. this has a really Distinct. Yeah, pate like livery flavor. People think I don't share with my team. Honestly, all the rest of this is for the team. You guys can have the chicken too, but you have to eat all of it together. Fair? Fair? Oh, we're getting a thumbs down on that one. All right. This was fantastic. It has been such a revelation to hang out with the people here. The way that people live off the land, the way they're so resourceful, the way they have so much joy and kind of lightheartedness in everything they do, it's really a model for how the world should be. You don't see people here waiting around to get help. Everyone here works hard, they bust their ass. And they look great. It's really impressive. So I'm blown away by you, by your food, and by the white Thai people in general. Yeah.
You don't need a time machine to travel back in time. Yes, folks here have motorbikes, phones, and Facebook, but life now is largely the same as it was generations ago. Being among these people teaches you about humanity, and their food tells a story of resourcefulness and innovation in the face of adversity. Next time, we're going to one of the world's most isolated mountain markets, where anything you can imagine is for sale. Being an influencer doesn't require millions of fans. All you need is this t-shirt. Entertain and inspire at your own pace. Don't be an influencer. Be a micro-influencer. Get your shirt now. Honestly, we're gonna fry these. You could fry a rock and it would taste good, so I'm not that worried. I, I was testing her to see, like... <laughs> To see if she'd be like, don't do it, you idiot. But she's like, oh, I want to see this. This is good. <laughs> Can you count to 10 in Thai? That's amazing. Now, if you sing and count, you could be a TikToker. So that was another fun food video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. Andrew, that was fun. Huge thank you to this guy for joining me. And I would like you guys to follow him here on his YouTube channel, where he's doing all sorts of fun videos. Check out what Andrew is up to right now. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. So will Andrew. A peace. Have you been saying peace this whole time? Like, not No, I not. usually just do the symbol. Oh, you don't say it? No, I Can like- Can you say it? Ready and- A peace. Okay, so you did one, I did one. Let's go.